In ancient Egypt, the Ibis was sacred to Thoth, who is well known for being an extremely powerful magician who can shapeshift into many animals, including the Ibis and the baboon. Thoth is the scribe for gods and humans alike and is often shown writing. He recorded everything from history to stories to songs. His Egyptian name is Thuidi, which means he who is like the Ibis. Today we are learning more about this powerful deity and ways we can honor him, his stories, magic, and sacred animals. And as always, I will have more information on him on the website. Hi, I'm Amy, founder of Celebrate Pagan Holidays. Check out my books in the description. Thoth is full of knowledge and wisdom. He is frequently shown with an angth, the symbol of life and immortality, reflecting his association with the preservation of human life. He carries the Waz scepter. This staff symbolizes power and dominion, indicating Thoth's authority and his role in maintaining order in the universe. Sometimes he is depicted with scrolls or a book, signifying his vast knowledge. They highlight his importance in the intellectual and spiritual life of ancient Egyptians. Thoth is the nerdy god. He is just so smart. When the Greeks conquered Egypt, they loved Thoth and continued to revere him. Thoth possesses extensive knowledge of mathematics, including geometry, which was essential for constructing the monumental architecture of ancient Egypt, like the pyramids and temples. His mathematical insights were also critical for land measurement and agricultural planning. Thoth is linked to the practice of medicine and healing. Ancient Egyptians believed that he gave humans the knowledge of healing arts, and he was often invoked in medical texts and rituals. His wisdom was thought to encompass the understanding of herbs, surgery, and various medical practices. He is considered the master of alchemy and the magical arts. Alchemy, in the context of ancient Egypt, was a precursor to chemistry involving the transformation of substances and the pursuit of immortality. Thoth's knowledge of magic formulas, incantations, was all intertwined with scientific experiments and knowledge of the afterlife. He was associated with the moon and responsible for measuring its cycles, which was crucial for creating the Egyptian calendar. His calculations helped determine the lunar calendar and, by extension, agriculture and religious calendars of the day. One popular story says that the ancient Egyptian calendar originally had 360 days. Nut, the goddess of the sky, was married to Geb, the earth god. However, Ra, the sun god, which we just talked about in a previous video, decreed that Nut should not give birth to her children on any day of the year. This was a problem because Nut was pregnant with the deities Osiris, Isis, Thes, and Nephthys. To help Nut, to help Nut, Thoth, known for his cleverness, devised a plan. He approached Kansu, the moon god, and challenged him to a game of Senate a popular board game in ancient Egypt. The stakes were high. Thoth wagered some of Kansu's moonlight in exchange for the winnings. Being a master of strategy and games, Thoth won the game and acquired enough moonlight to create five extra days so Nut could give birth. Thoth offered protection and guidance to Isis during her pregnancy. She, he gave her spells and knowledge to keep her safe from Set's attempts to harm her and the unborn Horus. When it was time for Horus to be born, Thoth was there to assist. He provided magical support to ensure a safe delivery and continued to offer protection to both Isis and the newborn babe. So it can be a bit overwhelming to work with Thoth. He is a very powerful and has just so much wisdom. 
Yeah, there is a lot to learn, but don't be intimidated. Thoth very much wants us to be successful. One of the reasons I shared the myths about him helping Nut and Isis is so that you can feel his compassionate side. Thoth loves our offerings that you have made, such as homemade bread. If you are not a baker, just go buy a nice herb bread for him to put on your altar. If you have a garden, he loves fresh dill. Other herbs and spices that make good offerings are anus and cinnamon. Like many Egyptian deities, Thoth loves the lotus flower. Many botanical gardens have lotus and water lilies growing, or you may have native ones in a local pond. Go visit and give thanks to Thoth. And say hello to Haget, the Egyptian frog goddess. You could even grow water lilies in a container. Check out my video on Egyptian flower magic for more on that. These are my beehives in my overgrown field back on the farm. Thoth loves honey and mead, so both make a wonderful offering. Agates, amethysts, carnelians, emeralds, and moonstones are all good crystals to have on your altar and work with when honoring Thoth. Blue and yellow candles for protection and wisdom. You can also purchase a statue if you choose, but it's not required. Thoth is more interested in you putting forth personal effort. Thoth wants you to do some heavy lifting. Put in the work. He is interested in your personal growth. Are you facing a tough decision? Thoth is a great God to ask for help. Meditate and invite him in. Ask him for guidance. Journaling is a great way to honor the God of writing. Journaling is also fabulous to express yourself and grow as a person. Write down a new spell or ritual in your Book of Shadows. The Book of the Dead is an entire book of spells, and many myths attribute Thoth as, as its author. Speaking of my Book of Spells, definitely something I want to keep safe. Book protection spells are great. I have one in the Thoth article I have linked below. Maybe at some point I will record myself doing it. For my friends that feel close to the Greek deities, the ancient Greeks loved Thoth and saw him as very similar to their god Hermes. They created a synergy deity known as Hermes Trismegistus, meaning Hermes the Thrice Great. This figure became the central character of the Hermetic tradition, a religious system that combines elements of Greek, Egyptian, and later Christian thought. You may ask how we know Thoth was real and present in Egyptian life. After all, we are talking about thousands of years ago. He is frequently mentioned in Egyptian hieroglyphic texts found on temple walls, tombs, and monuments. These pictures are from Ramesses II tomb. Thos is included in the pyramid text, coffin text, and the Book of the Dead, which are collections of funeral spells and hymns. You can check out my video on the Book of the Dead. The sacred ibis was a, was a bird in ancient Egypt who, I'm sorry, <laughs> who believed it was the earthly form of the god Thoth. The birds are often mummified and then buried with pharaohs. The Egyptians believe that ibises could help them improve their writing skills and protect them from plagues and serpents. Ibises were frequently mummified as an offering to Thoth, believing that mummification would put the birds on a direct line to the afterlife. Many of these mummified ibises have grains, snakes, snails, and other foods in their body cavities, possibly to provide the birds with some form of food for the afterlife. Because of their religious important farms dedicated to raising the ibis sprang up all over the country where they were bred and raised in captivity, processing as many as 20,000 ibises per year for the votive industry. Priests apparently gathered eggs for artificial incubation and tended the large flocks, as well as engaging in a large pottery industry to make urns for the mummified birds. 
These ibis farms may well be one of the earliest examples of bird farming. Thoth is also aligned with baboons. Baboons are highly intelligent and socially complex animals, traits that align well with Thoth's role in, as the god of wisdom and knowledge. In the context of the afterlife, baboons played a significant role. Thoth, often depicted as a baboon in funeral texts and art, was a key figure in the weighing of the heart ceremony. In this ritual, the deceased's heart was weighed against the feather of Ma'at, who was truth and justice. Thoth, in baboon form, was responsible for recording the outcome, ensuring the fair judgment of souls. On a fun note, in honor of Thoth's role in medicine and science, there is the crew of Thoth parade during Mardi Gras. The crew's original parade route was designed to serve people who were unable to attend other parades in the city. It passes in front of medical institutions like the Children's Hospital and several extended healthcare facilities. Please feel free to leave comments and questions. I hope to do more videos on Thoth and keep working with him personally. Thanks for watching and have a very witchy day.